Hi everyone, welcome to tutorial 63 of our introductory Python for image processing tutorial series. In the last four parts of uh, these videos, we looked at pandas, how to load the data, how to handle the data, sort and group. And uh, today let's have a quick look at how to deal with null data. What we mean by null data, when you import a CSV file or Excel or text, you know, and when you're trying to fill the data frame in pandas, there may be missing values. And how do you deal with that? Because when you're trying to do your, uh, st uh, for example, calculate statistics or get your data ready for machine learning, uh, most programs don't like or don't know what to do with null data. So we have to clean it up. The easiest thing to do is to just uh, delete the row or column that has a lot of null data, but again, you gotta be careful. Are you actually losing a lot of data by doing that? The other option is to fill it with something. Now that something can be uh, or should be uh, something very log uh, logical. You know, for machine learning purposes, yes, you can go ahead and fill it, but for real data when you're acquiring, you have to be a bit careful when you're filling in any missing data, and obviously you will be including how you filled the missing data in your publication so people uh, can really evaluate your uh, your work in, an, uh, in a very objective way. Okay, let's uh, jump into the uh, Spider IDE. Again, as usual, let's go ahead and import our pandas data frame and also uh, the CSV file that we have been working with. Uh, quick look again, I am not sure if you watched my previous tutorials, this data frame, uh, this data set actually has seven columns, unnamed uh, uh, zero, image names, unnamed zero is nothing but the set number, set number one, two, three, four, five, uh, one, two, three, four, four sets, each set has 25 images, total we have 100 images, and manual represents, uh, reflects the nuclei count, uh, counted by one person, and obviously this person overlooks some images, so we have some NAN numbers here. This is what we need to deal with right now. So we have one for each of the three top three sets, and for the set number four, we seem to have like at least two or three missing values. So let's see how to deal with that. And also under manual two, again, we only have three values and everything else uh, blank. So in this case, the good idea or the best idea is to drop manual two completely, because there is no way we are going to fake or fill all of these other uh, uh, rows here. Okay, so let's uh, jump into the code. First of all, uh, go ahead and type df.isNull. That actually tells you, is, is it null or not null? Well, in this case, you can see uh, manual two, the first three are false, 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 and then you have all trues. That means these are all nulls. Oftentimes, this is not that useful in terms of uh, getting a good understanding of uh, what's going on. But in this case, we know that, okay, manual two is useless. Let's look, go ahead and drop that column. Now we are fine. Now, when you do is null dot sum, it actually gives you how many of these are nulls. We should have done that even before dropping the column, but we know that uh, in this case, manual two has 97 null, so we dropped it. After dropping, df.isNull.sum tells you the sum of all trues within each column. So unnamed zero image and all the auto ones, uh, they do not have any null values, but the manual has six null values and we know this. And when we actually looked at it again, uh, you see this, there is one here, one more. So you have six of these. So we have to see what we can do. One is you can drop the, you can drop those, uh, uh, you know, uh, rows, and the way you do that is just df.dropNA. It's going to drop that entire row. So if manual has one missing value, if auto has one missing value, if something else has some missing value, it looks at a row and says, okay, is any of these null? If so, drop the entire row. That's what drop NA is, and let's go ahead and do that. When you do that, our data frame two now, because we are saving this into a new data frame. Our data frame two has only 96 rows, understandably, because we dropped six, and then six columns, okay? Uh, now let's go ahead and look at uh, the top 25. I think number 12, there you go. So the first uh, 10, 11 are okay, and number 12 is missing because it did not have, if I go back to my original data frame, number 12 right there has a missing value for manual. That's why the entire row is gone. So this is one way of dealing with null data. Uh, now let's actually go ahead and uh, find a bit more fancy way of filling this missing values. First of all, let's go ahead and look at the statistics for our manual. 
okay? So the st statistics is my mean value for this manual column is 100. All I'm trying to do is, again, let me go back to my data frame and looking at all of these and I'm just getting a mean value. Why? Because one way of filling this NANs is with the mean value of the entire column. Okay, that's 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 one way. Okay, so that's exactly what we are trying to do here. So the mean is 100. So we are basically saying, okay, for this column, manual fill NA. Okay, previously it was drop NA. Okay, now we are going to fill NA anywhere that has NA in that column with a value of 100. Okay. I just included this so I can show you what in place looks like. When you say in place equals to true, this is uh, equivalent to me just saying df is equal to df manual. Let me just copy this. df is equal to df. This is exactly same as this, okay? Except I'm not doing df equals to, all I'm doing is uh, Okay, df manual dot fill in a in place equals to true. I do not like to work this way. I like to always assign it as a variable, but it's up to you uh, how you want to do it. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, fill this. And now if I look at my data frame, let's open our data frame right there and look at the va 12th value. Previously we had NAN, now we have 100 there, okay? So wherever you see 100, I think uh, most probably this is where we used to have uh, missing values and now we are filling it with 100. There's a better way of filling NA, uh, these uh, NAN values. So let's go ahead and uh, delete our variables and read this one more time because I wanna show you one other way that probably makes logical sense. So again, if you look at this, here I have 119 in image 12. In image 14, I have 117. Uh, one way of actually filling this is by taking an average of this and this. Or you can just say, okay, uh, uh, but, but image 12 and image 14 are different. So maybe that's not a good way. How about filling this based on the average of these three, right? These three are from the same image, but in an automated way. So that also could be a good way. So again, it's up to, the exact need and experiment that you're trying to do, right? So in this case, let's go ahead and look at how to write a function to actually average these three and fill it, uh, fill the NAN values. It's again, very simple. One way you can do that is basically uh, define a function, oh, sorry, uh, is by define a function uh, uh, called, uh, I don't know, missing values or something or uh, define a function, in fact, called average values, not missing values, uh, and then uh, just define this row, uh, you know, uh, but, but, but this is just one thing that we're trying to do. So let's go ahead and use the Lambda, right? Again, watch my tutorial about Lambda functions. This is uh, instead of defining a function and calling it, I'm just uh, not defining it as a function and just using the Lambda in here. So how are we doing this? I am creating a column called df manual or not creating, basically referring to this manual column, okay? And applying a function to my data frame. What function am I applying? I'm applying a function called uh, for, for each row, average these three or add auto two, auto three, and this should be auto four, made a mistake. I think uh, auto three and auto four, okay? and divide by three. So basically I'm getting the values and averaging them and rounding them, okay? And then what do we do? If is none, okay, np dot is none, else row uh, manual, access equals to one. Okay, go ahead and study this. All of this is one single line. I just, I just uh, create, you know, did it this way so you can see it, okay? So again, in a row, do this averaging, and fill that value if it is not a number, okay? Otherwise, keep it as row manual, okay? So my df manual, okay? Uh, please go through this a couple of times, uh, especially if you're new to coding, this can be a, uh, a bit too much, okay? So again, uh, in the manual, we are replacing these values only if they are not a number with 
this calculation. If not, go ahead and keep it as usual uh, as your manual value within a given row. Okay, so let's go ahead and run these lines and see how it looks like our value number 20, uh, 12 is filled with a, uh, let's open this, it makes it easy. So previously we had 12 as not a number and then we filled it with 100 and now we are taking an average between 65, 90 and 84 which apparently is 80 and we are filling that value with 80. So these are uh, some of the ways of filling this NANs. Oftentimes you would like to drop it but uh, if you, it makes logical sense, at least you know a couple of ways of doing it. Also explore defining a function separately and applying that function to the data frame, okay? That's a great exercise that tells you a lot about how to, uh, you know, uh, how to do math with these columns in a very easy way. So thank you very much. And in the next tutorial, let's start looking at how to do uh, plotting by, uh, by cleaning up your data frame and then just uh, looking at a few ways to plot bar plots, line plots, and so on. So thanks again, and please do subscribe to this channel.